Saturday morning. I'm starting with a cup of tea, and then we're going to head out on a walk. There's a hawk that just flew by over me. You might have seen the shadow that just went by. I'm Instead of walking today, I'm sitting at the park. Um, it's just such a beautiful place to be, and it's a beautiful day, so we're going to do this here. So usually on Saturday mornings, I am in a lovely, comfortable office with my therapist, but she had to reschedule. So instead of being in a lovely, comfortable office, I am out here in nature. It's beautiful, but this is a, a ooh, birds, but this is a, uh, can't get my finger to do the right thing. This is a hiking trail behind me, so there might be some people walking by, but we'll just go with it, won't we? So when I was a little kid, like eight or nine, maybe 10 years old, I had to write some kind of report for school about what I wanted to be when I grew up. Grew up. And I, I might be combining two different memories in my head right now. Oof, really loud fly, sorry. But I remember two things. I remember one thing being that I wanted to be a chiropractor. <laughs> I thought it was a really cool word. I didn't quite know what a chiropractor was other than it was somebody who helped people not be in pain anymore. But I also remember clearly knowing deep in my soul of souls that I just wanted to be a mom. And funny enough, I wanted to be a mom, but I didn't want to be married. I wanted to do it on my own. Um, and then life happens. <laughs> And then I go to school and people have expectations that you are going to go to college and have a desire to have a fulfilling career and make something of yourself. My parents were not the kind of parents that pushed me to do any one thing, but they did have the expectation that my sister and I would be productive people. Um, my older sister was very intellectual and, um, academically focused and she went to college right away and graduated in four years and, um, had a career, uh, eventually left her career to do something creative. I, being younger and impressionable, attempted to follow in those footsteps. Now, had I understood that, you know, you have at 55 years old, you have hindsight. <laughs> um, so I can look back on my life now and not with regret, but with a knowing that the experiences that I had were in fact telling me something. So my experience of going to college was a whole bunch of failed starts. I started and stopped and started and stopped. I would go for a semester or two and then give up. It was socially too hard or emotionally too hard or academically, intellectually too hard. And I would work a retail job or something like that. And that went on for about a decade until finally at uh, 26 years old when I had gotten married and I realized that I needed to do something with myself because the man that I married at the time, and I, I will not speak negatively of him just because it's not a good vibe, but um, his expectation was that we would both be working to support the family. So. I kind of was pushed to finish school. So I finally graduated at 29 years old. And in that time decided the 
thing that makes most sense for me to do is to become a teacher uh, because it's similar to being a mom. I loved kids. I had spent a lot of time working in like as a nursery school teacher in my on and off years of being in school and working. And I enjoyed that. I babysat as a young girl and I enjoyed that. Um, but all of these experiences were, you know, kept me in the realm of nurturing. So anyway, I started teaching at the age of 30 and um, 29 or 30. And after a couple of years, I had my son, who's now 22. And so I took a year off to spend with him. And that was the most beautiful year bonding with this beautiful human that I created and grew inside of me. It was more beautiful, a more beautiful experience than I have words to describe. Um, I just see all the moments in my head. Some of my favorite were rocking him to sleep at night. He would always grab a lock of my hair. Um, he did that until he left to go to college. He would just kind of reach out and hold a piece of my hair. Now he pats me on the top of my head instead. <laughs> um, so after spending a year with him, I worked another couple years and then was pregnant with my daughter and stayed home a year to be with her and then went back to work. And I've been working since the time she was a year old fully with no stops. And it's mostly been a fulfilling career. But let me try to circle back to where I started here. I wanted to be a mom. Um, the only other thing I remember wanting to be when I was young was a chiropractor. And not because I thought that the art of chiropractic was interesting or valuable. I just had heard the word. I thought it was a cool word. I asked my dad what it meant and he told me and I knew that it meant that I would help people to feel better. So I decided that that's what I wanted to be. Um, and then that just got left, you know, left by the wayside. Anyway, back to the story here. Wanting to be a mom. I wish and I'm saying this not in a regretful term, but I wish that I, this is going to sound weird because I got to be a mom and I, I did the job of mom so well. Like I am so proud of my children. They are the most amazing humans I could have created but I wanted to just be a mom. I didn't want to be a part-time mom and a full-time employee. I just wanted to spend all the moments with them. Now, I, I did a really good job despite the fact that I ended up being a part-time mom in more ways than one because eventually I was a part-time single mom eventually I was a part-time single mom because when my son was six my daughter three um, their dad and I got divorced um, so I was <laughs> I, I, I struggled um, everything has turned out fine. I don't want to focus on the bad stuff right now. I completely lost my train of thought. <laughs> I think it's because it's so beautiful where I'm sitting right now. And I just get lost in what I'm seeing. Let me try to get myself back to <clears throat> back together again here. Okay. So I ended up <clears throat> being a mom, being a part-time, part-time single mom. 
and I still did an amazing job. I don't really have regrets. I think what I'm trying to say is that the only thing that I do regret is that I didn't know to follow that intuition when I was eight, nine, or 10, however old I was when I had these first thoughts. And I, I've learned with hindsight and maturity and through living this full life that that um, insight that we have, that intuition that we have is really all we have. Our, our intuition is what guides us, you know? So me wanting to leave, end my career, there's a beautiful hawk flying up above. Ah, it just circled me. And another little aside, but I know that when you're in the presence of a hawk, I believe that it means strength and fortitude. So the fact that it just circled above me right now is everything. It's off in the distance there a bit, circling still. Now it's flying back to me a bit. Oof, beautiful moments here. Um, so I didn't listen to my intuition at 8, 9, or 10 because I didn't understand what that was. You know, I, I did what the right thing was, which was to struggle my way through college. Um, but now I know to pay attention to it. And because my job of parenting is essentially, you know, the essentials of parenting are done now. There's, I don't need to participate in like the day-to-day -day care and feeding of my children anymore because I did such a good job. <laughs> um, we're, we kind of more like bounce things off of each other now. You know, they'll come to me and talk to me about a situation and I'll give them some feedback or kind of like nudge them in a direction or tell them, you know, well, why don't you try this or go here and you'll find the answer that maybe you'll find an answer to what you need. And that's all that they need right now. So since I'm that part of parenting is over. Um, you know what, this sucks because my thoughts were so clear before I sat down and pulled out the phone and this little microphone, the thoughts were so clear. <laughs> I wish that I could just like say them and store them properly in my head so that when I want to say them again to share with you, they come out clearly. Ah. I don't want to be only left with a career because that's not what I wanted to begin with, which is why I want to, my career to end in the next four years. I'm going to be editing the hell out of this video because it's not making any sense. <laughs> oh my God. I'm just going to show you this tree for a moment because I need to gather my thoughts together. Isn't that beautiful? Okay, back to me. I don't know if I'm ready yet. In me being true to myself, I need to give myself what I really need. And what I really need now is to 
ooh, that circled right back to itself, is to be true to myself. <laughs> um, and when I think about what being true to myself means, it's not continuing to give to the children of 24 other families. It's to give to me. Like, I don't want to betray myself in life by never having the opportunity to really look inside and see what I want to do. Because now that I um, don't need to parent in the same way, I need so many things. I need this. I need to just sit in the park and soak up the sun and listen to the birds and smile at people walking by. I need to color in coloring books. I need to do puzzles. I need to talk to myself. I need to study things that are interesting to me. Like food, nutrition, the depths of my mind, how interacting with the world affects me. I need to understand everything there is to understand about my neurodivergent brain. I need to love my relationship. I need to make peace with my body and my mind because sometimes they don't do what I want them to do. I need to create things. But at the same time, I still want to be helping people. So what I want to do when I'm done teaching, when my career ends, is I want to be a coach of some kind. And I'm still working out what that's going to look like and sound like and feel like. Um, I, I don't know what kind of coach I want to be, but I, I want to have some kind of business where I'm helping people find follow their intuition, um, be kind to themselves, accept themselves, um, I want to sit down with people in the park like I am now and give them time to process things that they're going through. I want to write books about my experiences and how they've shaped me. I want to, I, I, I still want to offer parts of myself, but just in a different capacity. Um, I've said before in other videos, I don't just want to sit down and watch TV. I still want to live my life fully and participate in it. But I just want it to look different than it looks right now. So I have four years to, to figure this out. I have four years, well, more years, but it would be nice if I have this figured out and planned so that when I do retire, I can just ease right into my business idea or um, into still being um, to still giving to into still giving the parts of me, still being of value. This is what happens. It's so hard when you see your thoughts and pictures and not words. It's really hard. Hmm. 
I'm like, this is what I want to be working on. I want to, I want to create something else. Um, I can't put words to why that's so important to me. I just know that it is. I know why it's important to me. <laughs> the words just suddenly flooded in my mind. Um, it, I, I, I need to, I feel like I need to make up for not following my initial intuitions. And I don't want to fail myself again <clears throat> because now I have knowledge and now I have power and now I have um, the means and now I have whew, very aggressive fly and now I have the independence um, to do that without anybody telling me that I shouldn't. There is so much nature around me right now. A bird just flew and landed on the tree in front of me, and it's a black bird, but its wings have these two white patches on each wing, and its beak is bright red. But, oh, it's beautiful, my goodness. I don't get to do this stuff during my day because I work in an institution, literally. The school that I work in is not in a beautiful part of town. The buildings are gray. The floors are tile. The doors are metal. <laughs> it's in a big city across from a hospital. Oh, I just want to be here. Okay, this video is turning out to be more for me than for any of you all. So if any of you all are still here, <laughs> while I literally like process all of the depths of my mind, thank you so much. Like you are the diehard, beautiful life sagers. Um, but I'm doing this because it's really helping me understand me. Uh, yeah. And I've noticed in the comments that when I have these moments, a lot of you write to me and tell me that you are understanding things about yourself too. So um, I know that this is okay. It goes against all the rules of YouTube. Have a script, have a plan, look into the camera. <laughs> no. You guys know we don't need to do that. We just need to be ourselves. I don't know if I've mentioned on this take because I had a few of these that I started and stopped uh, before this one, but there's a channel that I really love, starting to love, because he's helping me to feel comfortable just sitting and doing this. Um, the channel is Gooby and Doobie, and he does a lot of processing out in nature. And I find it endearing and beautiful and honest and safe. So um, this video is dedicated to Gooby and his dog, Doobie. <laughs> Thank you for, like, paving the way for authenticity on YouTube. I don't think that I have an insightful end today. It was just literally processing. So thanks for being with me. Watch one of these videos next. Um, and the next video won't be as long because I'll be walking and I'll just do my loop <laughs> and it'll be shorter. So that's it. See you again another day on video four. Bye.